So yeah, Tuesday the 17th of May 2016, just woken up from a prophetic dream. And I'm grateful that I received this dream, even though they're really scary. Uh, last week I uh, uploaded a video and like kind of complained about the amount of prophetic dreams I was getting, but I, um, I've repented of that, okay, just to let you know. And I'm sorry for moaning, and I said to the Lord, I'm sorry, and please feel free to give me dreams and prophetic dreams, as many as you like, and as, as often as you like, Lord. So I, I went, and that was that was last night that I repented of that, and then I had that message this morning, and and I just woken up from the dream because of work nights, obviously. So, um, so here was the dream. <coughs> um, just quickly before I go into the dream, I just looked on the last video to see how it was doing, and the comments that I had on there were crazy, man. It's like, I mean, like seriously, guys, you you've got to. <laughs> You have got to read your Bible and ask the Holy Spirit to minister to you what it means. Because in reply to one comment on there, someone said, Oh, as in the days of Noah, you know, everything will be calm. Like, you know, uh, people will be eating, drinking and marrying, just like in the days of Noah until the end of the ark. Uh, so that means we're going to be raptured and everything's going to be calm and everything's going to be happy. No, 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 man. You have got, you've completely got that wrong. What that is saying is, as in the days of Noah, there was per perpetual sin. You know, the the world was the DNA was corrupted in the days of Noah. The you know the Nephilim were running around. The angels from heaven were mating with human beings. There was total sin. The Lord searched the earth for someone that was righteous, and He found Noah and his family. The rest of the world were in sin. They were unrepentant, and the Lord threw a judgment upon them and flooded the whole world. As in the days of Noah, they were not expecting the judgment. It suddenly came and killed them all, wiped them all out. That's what that verse is saying. It's not saying, oh, as in the days of Noah, everyone was calm. I mean, come on. Are you, are you what? What are you doing? Are you are you quoting that verse to like try and prove a point or something? As in like, um, oh, you know, this is the way it's going to be. Or or do you generally believe that? Because if you generally believe that, you've got it wrong, mate. What that is saying is. As in the days of Noah, our end days. Now, look at the state of the world. G gays, homosexual, murder, racism, you know, the whole thing in America right now with uh, people can share the same blooming bathroom, like men and women, and, you know, it's just sick what's going on. Uh, the evil in this world, like, you know. As in the days of Noah, the judgments will soon fall upon us, you know. You will not be aware of it. Uh, you'll be going about your business, Drinking, marrying, all the rest of it, and the judgments will come in a day, sudden, bang! You know, seriously, man. You know, you guys, read the Bible. Read the Bible. Why would the Lord be warning his people so frantically, you know, to go in the inner rooms and lock yourself in while the judgment passes? What would that be talking about there? If we're going to be raptured before that, why would we be warned in the Holy Bible to go into the inner rooms and lock ourselves in while the judgment passed because the judgment is not for us? Why would the Lord be warning his people not to take the RFID chip um, if we're going to be raptured before it? Why would the Lord be warning people to come out from Mystery Babylon and to go to a safe place and come out from Judea and do not go back to your rooftop to collect things. Do not go back to the field to collect things. Do not go in your house to get your coat. If we are going to be raptured before this stuff, why? You know, you, you can't quote Bible verses along there if you haven't really studied it or really prayed into it and asked the Lord to reveal it to you. The next thing, why are people receiving many upon many of prophetic dreams and visions on what is coming? You know, if we're going to be raptured before it, come on, use a bit of common sense. It's not rocket science. And here's the next thing, right? You can go slaughtering all the all the way that you like on on people's messages like this. But when this stuff comes, you are going to be caught out. You are going to be facing the judgment just like the rest of the world. What? Because you didn't use a bit of common sense. Use a bit of common sense. Pray and ask the Holy Spirit to minister to you. Right. Honestly, and I don't care, man. You can write as many messages as you like. But what I'm worried about is you. When this stuff comes along, you are going to be unprepared because you thought you knew it all, right? And here's the other thing, right? The end of the world hasn't happened yet. So nobody can claim to know what will happen. But the Bible, we know, is the truth. And if we, as long as we stick with the Bible, we know that would be all right. And our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you're offended, tough titties. I'm sorry, but you don't like it, unsubscribe and off you go, like, you know. 
that you're the one who's, who's going to be caught out. You ain't going to be ready for what is coming. And I'm sharing from the Lord and from the Bible what is coming. You know, um, I'm getting dreams and visions from the Lord. And I'm not trying to be offensive here. But at the end of the day, right, the messages I'm giving is for you to get ready. To be prepared for what is coming. And if you're going to ignore that and go, go up against me, you know, my job's done. You know, if the watchman does not say, he will be held accountable for your blood on my hands. But here's the thing, right? I've given the message now. Your blood is on your own hands, okay? If you don't take the warning, it's your problem, you know? So anyway, that's that. Right, let's get on to the prophetic dream that I just had. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Every time I have a cup of tea, the blue and coaster sticks to the cup. <laughs> You should pull it off, but there's no point. I might as well just keep it on there. It's good, because then you don't have to aim for the coaster when you put the cup down. You just pick it up, have a sip, put it down where you want. <laughs> oh, it's come off now. Come on, stick back on there, you bastard. Oh, sorry. There we go. Anyway, the prophetic dream. So I went to sleep. I, I didn't ask for one, although I did pray last night, like I said earlier that the Lord, um, or this morning, early hours this morning, to give me more dreams and visions and the rest of it. Um, so I was, uh, in my dream, yeah, it was pretty horrendous. And the thing is, these dreams, they are horrendous. They are really awful to go through. Um, it's one thing telling them and you hearing them and, and making a story up in your head going along with it. But, pardon me, to actually experience these dreams, they're really horrendous, you know. You really feel like you're there. Really terrifying. Um, so I was in my dream, right? And, and this is very important. Believe it is a prophetic dream, okay? Uh, I'll go through the bits that I remember. Uh, Lord, I pray, please, can you be with me and help me to share the dream as I just had it with me and help me to remember to get everything in there that you need me to get in there. Thank you, Lord Jesus, Father God. Amen. Um, so I was in a church service, right? And there were two preachers at the front. Uh, more to the point, it was the Vatican. It was to do with the Vatican and the Catholic Church, I believe it would be. I was in a church service, and there was this man preaching up the front. And honestly, you would think that he was a proper Christian, you know? The way that he was talking and the way that he appeared, he seemed to be uh, normal. And he was he was reading from the Bible and preaching the word of the Lord God, okay? And um, he was talking to this church service, and there were... People of different ages, mainly old people in there, but there were people in there, different ages and stuff. And it was a massive, massive church. It was like a cathedral type church, you know. Um, and uh, this guy was preaching. But this same guy, just below the church, had like a whole concentration camp going on. Of like, just like the Jews. And, and the Lord's used that before with me. It was like the Jews. There was this massive concentration camp going on just below the church and he was the run run he was the guy running this camp and uh killing people in the most sadistic and horrendous way um but before man he appeared as a holy man um and i don't know if this is referring to the pope or what but like this this man was a holy man before men but under the church he had this massive concentration camp going on and unfortunately i happen to be one of these people I was a Christian in this dream, and I was on the run. Christians are on the run in this dream. Christians are going to be on the run in these end days. Uh, like, seriously, on the run. Uh, there are going to be a lot of people trying to kill us. You, you need to understand this, right? And if, if you're one of these people, from the comments on the last video, listen in, all right? Prophetic dream. The Lord God said that in the end days, your sons and daughters will prophesy. What would be the point of us prophesying if it wasn't going to happen? So I am prophesying because I am a son of the Lord and uh, I, I'm getting dreams and visions. And in this dream, us Christians were on the run and they were, they were trying to kill us. And so many times I went in and out of this concentration camp, I was able to run between it and I was managed to get up the staircase into this church. And, um, oh, he managed to capture me and my brother, Jamie. My brother Jamie's in most of these dreams because I worry about him and stuff. And they couldn't kill me or something because they, I don't know, they just couldn't kill me. But oh, and I was with a mate called Ryan, and they they grabbed this big sword and they said, 
uh, for you escaping, we're going to harm you really badly. And they cut my hands, like lines down my hands and down my front, and I was trying to run as they were doing this, and I was bleeding so much, and they cut my legs with this sword, and they did the same to Ryan. We managed to escape, and then we were in darkness. So as we were running along, it was dark. Um, but the main point to remember here was this, this bloke was preaching as if he was preaching from the Bible. He's quite a tall bloke, and he had, like, blonde hair. Well, that's what the guy was in the dream anyway. Uh... And this other guy, I believe was the Pope. And, um, you know, this deception that, uh, you know, they were preaching everything holy, everything nice, everything as the Bible says, but below the church, this concentration camp. And in my dream, they were killing Christians and they were chasing you all over the place. It was absolutely horrendous, it really was. It was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. And that's, that's kind of all I can remember of it, really. But it went on a lot, lot longer than that. Um, but there will be people out there that deceive you in the end days. And, believe, and it was the Vatican. Something to do with the Vatican, okay? That's what you need to remember. Vatican. That was in the dream. Vatican, preaching as if everything's all good and normal. At the same time, running up a huge concentration camp. Butchering and slaughtering millions. In the most horrendous way. And it was terrifying, the conditions. Uh, really evil men, really evil men giving off the appearance that they're holy. Um, yeah, and so if any of my, uh, like I said before, I'm not on here to people please, I'm on here to share the word of the Lord and uh, to share the dreams and visions that I receive. But please, man, come on, use a bit of common sense, yeah, right? You know, nobody wants to go through the tribulation. I mean, seriously, think about it. Right, and it's not even enjoyable talking about it, you know. Nobody wants to go through it. I don't want to go through it. I mean, it's pretty scary the fact it's coming along, but I know I'll be okay. I mean, the Bible says, um, persevere, run the race. The, the Bible never promised Christians an easier, easier, easy journey, but it said, if, if you continue and persevere until the end, great glory and, and the Lord's light will be revealed to us, and we'll get into an eternity in heaven with the Lord persevere to the end and it will be worth it you know christians will suffer many trials and tribulations okay but even that there trials and tribulation you know says in the bible that someone says sir who are these in heaven and the lord says these are the ones that came out of the great tribulation why are you overlooking these bible verses why are you overlooking the warnings what would be the point of a watchman do you know what I mean? What would be the point of a watchman? Why why would the Lord have watchmen in these end days, right? For what reason? If we're a watchman for the people that aren't going to get into heaven, what is the point? You know, come on, just use a bit of common sense here, yeah? Right? There are watchmen to warn people of what is coming so that you can prepare and get ready, okay? There are judgments coming along. We as Christians are going to go through it. I'm sorry if that offends you, but that's what the Bible says, okay? The quicker that you take that in, take it into your heart, grasp it, understand it, you can prepare yourself with the Lord Jesus, and when it comes, it won't be so much of a shock for you. This is the idea of these dreams, prophetic dreams and visions, like I just, just told you just now. The Vatican, the big church, and uh, something to do with the Vatican and the Pope and all the rest of it. They're going to be preaching to you, saying that everything's great and hunky-dory, blah, 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 blah. And they're going to be running a massive blimmin' concentration camp, butchering people. Okay? You now know this is forewarning of what is coming. Okay? And when that happens, you'll be like, oh yeah, I heard about that a couple of years ago, a couple of months ago, through that Dan Geezer on YouTube, like, you know. And because that Dan Geezer saying that, I knew that it was coming. I was able to prepare myself. Or you'll be like, oh, I'm such a faggot. I heard that, heard all these blooming dreams and visions for all these different people, I didn't listen to them, I argued with them, and now I have no food and water, and I'm stranded here on my own, in a horrendous situation, because I thought I knew it all. I don't care, you know, I'm sharing the dreams and visions as I receive them, in accordance with the Lord's will and the Holy Bible, okay? I am playing the Watchman, Ezekiel 33, uh, Watchman on the Wall, if I tell you, your blood will not be held accountable on my hands, if you... If you don't heed the warning, as the Bible says, your blood be on your own head. My job and duty is done before the Lord Jesus Christ. I have warned you, and if you do not take the warning, it is your problem. 
I suggest that you take it very seriously, pray about everything, and as I always say, uh, weigh everything up that I say with the Bible and pray about it. Seek the confirmation from the Lord Jesus yourself. If you do not get ready, you're going to be caught out just like the rest of the world. Please, take these warnings uh, and these messages very seriously. And not just that, but you're not promised tomorrow anyway. You don't even know if you'll make it to the blooming... You, won't, you don't know if you'll make it to the tribulation of rapture anyway. You could die by tonight with a blood clot on your brain or a heart attack. You could step out in front of a car. You always need to be in a state of spiritual readiness with the Lord, okay? Always. See what I'm saying? To, to many people across the world, thousands, I think it's 150,000 a day die. 150,000 across the world is the end of the world as they know it on a daily basis. Be ready. Spiritually prepare yourselves. Be ready. Be in constant prayer with the Lord. Okay? I'm not trying to offend you, I'm not trying to upset you or anger you. I love you, man, and I care about you, and I'm trying to help you to get ready for what is coming. Okay, um, And it annoys me because I make so many of these videos, so many messages, saying the same thing over and over again, and I get the same blooming replies, and it's like, what is wrong with you? Read the Bible! You know, ask the Holy Spirit to talk to you about it. You know? Seriously, ask the Holy Spirit to talk to you about it. You know, stop trying to live in this airy-fairy little bubble, man. You know, everybody would like to live in a little bubble. But the Bible makes it clear about what is coming. But the Bible also says that our Lord will be with us even until the very end. That our Lord will give us the strength. He will give you the strength. He will protect you. Divine protection. Divine strength. Divine love. You know, the Lord, he will look after us. He will look after you. So prepare yourself with him now. So when this stuff does come, you'll be ready in him and with him. Okay? Alright, that's the message. God bless. Take care. Cheers. Bye-bye.